Shall we join together in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening that we could come and approach your throne of grace. And Lord, what a privilege it is to come to you and first, Lord, to praise you for your wonderful deeds, for the wonder of who you are. We praise you, God, for your power, for your goodness, for your mercy and your grace that you have abounded to us. Thank you, God, for accepting us into your family. Thank you, God, for the salvation so full and free, and for the other things that you provide for us every day, our protect, for our protection, for the provision, and for our for meeting our daily needs, and oh God, even for giving us the opportunity to serve you. Help us all, Lord, not to take that, those things for granted. Lord, at, at this moment, we pray for Pastor Boyd. I pray that you would give him added strength. I pray, oh God, that you would cheer his spirit up, as well as, oh Lord, that you would give him a good appetite. I pray, Lord, that um, you would be able to gain strength and to gain weight as well. Lord, I pray that you would also undertake uh, Pastor Mike Daniel's problem. I pray, God, that you would provide for the needs for the immunotherapy. I pray, God, that this will be a success, uh, Lord. We bring to your, atten to, your to your presence, Lord, Sister Linda de Gia, that she would fully recover from ascites. I pray, God, that you grant her healing. And for Brother Chris Cal. Thank you, God, for the news that we have heard. Thank you, God, that he is no longer intubated. I pray, Lord, that you would continually um, touch him with your healing hand so that he would be able to recover fully. For Brother Jeff, Jeff Bartlett, who will be undergoing kidney stones removal tomorrow, I pray, oh God, for a safe uh, operation and also for their provision. Thank you, Lord, that the blood that they need is, has already been provided for. We pray, God, for Sister Susan Francisco. We pray, God, for financial provision on them and recovery from COVID. And also for Brother Romulo Rimpilio, that he would be able to recover from cold. And Lord, help Brother Mark Arma, that he would be, uh, that he would fully recover from all of his ailments, Lord. And also for their probi financial provisions. Lord, we pray for Pastor James Montenegro. I pray, God, that he would be able to uh, fully recover from the damage that COVID-19 have done. I pray, God, that his lungs would get stronger and would heal faster. We pray, Lord, for our brethren in Myanmar. Lord, they are in a great um, straight today. I pray, God, for their protection. I pray, God, for stability in the government. And Lord, I pray that given at this time that it may be so hard, but it could, uh, we know, Lord, that nothing uh, that happens that ever escapes your attention. And we know, Lord, that you have a plan. And help them, O oh God, to fully trust in you. And Lord, I pray that you would bless the services here, especially the service tonight. And I pray, God, that you would bless the speaker as you would use him. And this I can and pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed evening to everyone. Let us all stand. Magsitayo po tayo lahat as we sing. Let us sing the song, Wherever He Leads, I'll Go.
Let us sing, look to the Lamb of God. If you from sin, on the first verse, ready, say. If you from sin, are longing to be free, look to the Lamb of God. He to redeem, who died on Calvary, look to the Lamb of God. Look to the Lamb of God. Look to the Lamb of God. As I call our speaker, one of our students in Asia Baptist Bible College and one of our Sunday school teachers, may I call Brother William Lairon. Good evening, everyone. In the 1968 Olympics of Mexico City, John Stephen Aquari, the marathon runner from Tanzania, Africa, finished last. Remember, no last place finisher in the marathon. But he ever finished quite so last. Why? What happened to him? He endured along the way. He walked with difficulty in the, into the stadium with the leg blooded, and bondage. It was more than an hour when after the rest of the runner had completed the race and only a few spectators were left in the stands when John Stephen Aquari finally across the finish line. Then they asked him, why did you continue to run the race despite of the pain? You know what's a quarry reply? My country did not send me to Mexico City to start the race. They sent me here to finish. The attitude of that athlete ought to be our attitude as we grow. Oftentimes, we lose our focus on God when hardship or problem comes. And there is a race is set before us and we are to keep running and Jesus Christ is the best example to follow. Since Christ is the source and the perfecter of our faith, we must run the race with patience. Please turn our Bible to Hebrew chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. And may I request everyone to please stand as we read this passage. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set 
before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for joy, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and it sat down at the right hand at the throne of God. For consider him and endure such contradiction as sinners against himself, lest he be weird and faint in your minds. Let's pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful day that you have given to us. Thank you, O God, for uh, another opportunity that I can uh, preach tonight, O God. I pray that uh, you bless the message for this evening. Continue to bless all the listeners, even our listeners in uh, online, O God. I, I pray that you continually bless them and uh, all the message will uh, will not just hear it, but they put it into practice, O oh God. I also pray that you uh, uh, guide us and protect everyone of us while we are here in the trying time, O oh God. And uh, also ask forgiveness for our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. To understand this passage, we need to look at the previous, your previous chapter the chapter 11, as evidence where the word were for in the beginning of chapter 12. And the word and the cloud of witnesses in verse 1 are, are the heroes of faith in the chapter 11. And they are Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the rest of the Old Testament believers who walk by faith. Their examples Ex their example ex is encourage us, encourages us to trust God in the same way. We are surrounded by the saints of the past, and we and are cheering us the same victory in the life of faith that they obtain. The author of this book, the book of Hebrews, shows that salvation comes from faith and faith alone, and also shows that Christ is better than all types and shadow of the Old Testament. He is the ultimate model of faith. In fact, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. The author reminds us that always live by faith, as said in chapter 11. Now, since Christ is the source and the perfecter of our faith, we must endure the race that is set before us. We can see that in verse 1. Wherefore, seeing, we also see compass about with so great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which that easily beset us. The word race in this passage, in Greek word is agon or agony. It is one of the most known athletic contests during that time. A race is when participants run at the same time on a certain length of path, and the purpose is to reach the finish line of the course, and that what you call marathon, not a sprint. Now, this race refers also to our spiritual race. The writer does not mean that a Christian should be the first, or they should not be trying to see who is the fastest or the best Christian is. Rather, it means each of us finish the race that is set before us. But this race need endurance. How can we run the race with endurance? First, in verse 1 we can see, let us lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. Tells that we should lay aside every weight or extra baggage that refers to unnecessary things of this word offers offers us and we can and that can affect 
to our growth and our daily endeavor for the Lord. So, it is also a burden na pasan-pasan natin na kahit uh, sobrang bigat na ayaw pa rin nating bitiwan. It is like a chain na parang tayo nakakadena na hindi tayo makawala. This is not just the, the old beliefs or tradition. This is also the problem and the unnecessary habits like television, cell phones, and social media. Yes, now we can use our uh, these gadgets for our online ministry. But how can we, as a Christian, nagagamit ba natin to ng tama? Yung like our social media. We use uh, like our FB. We use our FB for our online service. But uh, sometimes we are using. Uh, we will. We are just make this an option para hindi na tayo matend ng church. And then uh, as we can see, sometimes uh, as we are using, uh, as we are watching the 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 online service in the cell phone. Di ba, maraming, uh, maraming, napakaraming mga, uh, maraming mga, ano tawag doon, mga hadlang or mga nagpa-pop up, mga notification. So, nasaan yung focus natin? Nawawala yung focus natin. Instead na tayo ay makapag-focus doon sa, sa pinapanood natin. Ang dami nag message or may mga lumalabas na notification. And that's why, uh, we are we are still encourage everyone to 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 come and worship with us because the bible says in hebrew 10 10 25 not forsaking the assembly right so now yung mga baggage na yan yung mga humahad lang sa atin dapat alisin natin yan and this weights hinders as believers, as, to, as we grow our faith, the runner should throw off anything that should slow them down. Diba? How, have you ever seen a runner wearing a jacket or na, may dalang maleta or na, may mga suot na accessories? Diba wala? Wala tayo makikita ganung mga atlet na tumatakbo. In fact, they are wearing a uh, light uh, clothes, yung mga maninipis na materials na sinusot nila habang sila'y tumatakbo. Kasi nga, kung tayo makakita ng ganong runners or athlete, ibig sabihin nun, hindi siya seryoso sa kanyang pagtakbo. Hindi siya seryoso na uh, sa, na, sa kanyang ano, sa, na marating yung finish line. Wala, wala siyang, uh, hindi, hindi siya determinado Diba? When you are running in life, are you setting aside the weight that is not helpful? Next one is lay, let us lay aside every sin that hinder us in our race. In verse 1 also makikita natin yan. And also tells us that we must lay aside every sin. For this can greatly affect our relationship with God. Sins that you keep doing and giving. Uh, lahat ng gawin natin, hayag man o lihim, mabuti man yan o masama, lahat nakikita yan ng Diyos. Wala tayong ma- may tatago sa Diyos. ba? Nakikita niya lahat tayo. He's al- always watching us. Remember King David. Remember King David's adulterous act with Bathsheba that's branched out other sins. Akala, uh, minsan yung akala natin na uh, tinitingnan natin na maliit lang na bagay or maliit na kasalanan like yung mga respectable sins like gossips, uh, uh, anxiety, yung ano pa ba? Pride. Minsan hindi natin napapansin yan. Na, na akala natin ay maliit lang na ano yung parang okay lang yan. Pero sin is a sin. 
Walang maliit o malaking kasalanan. We are called to stay the course and remain faithful and patience to the end. Every race is the is strenuous test and fitness of fitness and endurance. But the race is set before us is an is the extra special one. It is a spiritual race. It requires stamina, commitment, and discipline in order to live faithfully. That's why we need to lay aside every weight and sin, and we should run the race with patience, for surely troubles will come along our way, especially that we Christians are Satan's number one target. The devil wants to destroy us and not to be used by God. Apostle Paul used the same imagery near the end of his life. We can see in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, he said that, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25, and in Philippians 3, verse 14, there was a price that awaits. Sabi sa Philippians 3, verse 14, I press toward the mark for the price of high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There was a price that awaits, not a corruptible one, but incorruptible reward, eternal reward. God wants us to run and finish the course patiently with Him. Second, since Christ is the source and the perfecter of our faith, we must run the race with focus. Let's look to verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking is like a uh, if you are a married person, hindi ka na maghahanap ng iba pang ano. Uh, kasi married ka na. Like, parang ganun. So, so, looking implies to turn the eye away from away from other things and fix, fix on, on focusing on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, now, why we need to look at Christ? Why we need to look at Christ? Sabi dito sa verse 2 is because He is the author and the finisher of our faith. The word author first is the author of our faith. The author means is Jesus Christ is the originator, the creator, the chief leader or, in the, cap or the captain of our faith faith. In Hebrew 2 verse 10 says that for it become him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sense unto glory to make the captains of their salvation perfect through suffering. The word author also used in in Acts 3, verse 15, as prince of life, the author of life. Jesus Christ is the author of life. The prince, in Acts 3, verse 15, and killed the prince of life whom God had raised from the dead, whereof we are witness. He's also a prince of our faith. The next one is because he is the finisher of our faith. A finisher means a perfecter or the completer. Jesus Christ is the finisher and the perfecter of our faith. For one who has in his own person raised faith to its perfection and so set before us the highest example of faith. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. In Revelation 1 verse 8 and 11. Jesus 
is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the he is the author and the finisher in that he has already set a trail and finished the course and it is a complete it is fulfilled and perfect work of Christ in the cross of Calvary. He said, it is finished. Corrie ten Boom quoted, when she survived through the hellish life in Nazi concentration camp, a place where hope was lost. For most people, she says that if you look at this world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. But if you look at Christ, you'll be at rest. My question is for you, my brethren, now is, where are you looking at? Who are you following? Are you focusing on the word, world and its danger? Think about it. Lastly, since Christ is the source and the perfecter of our faith, we must run the race with victory. In verse 3, verse 2b to 3, says here, Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand on the throne of God? For consider him that endured such contradictions as sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. When Jesus Christ endured to finish, the, to finish the, his race, he became victorious. His victory over sins is proved by his resurrection. Now, we are running the race for not for, we are not running the race for victory. Rather, we are already victorious. Don't run like a loser. You're already a winner. That's a great hope. Why Jesus, uh, why Jesus Christ became victorious? First, uh, because of the joy that was set before him. That is, who in the view of all the honor which would have at the right hand of God and the happiness which would experience from the conscience that had redeemed the world was willing to bear the sorrow connected to the atonement. He is also victorious because he endured the cross, endured patiently, the pain that comes with the suffering and obedience and, obe and obeying the death on the cross. He is also victorious. He became victorious because he despised the shame. Disregarding the embarrassment of such a mode of death. In verse 3, we can see how Christ endured for us. He lived a perfect life to be a qualified to die for us, that through him we live. How marvelous and wonderful he is. His death, his burial, and his resurrection had already sealed the victory. It is a total shame and humiliation for the Son of Man to be on the cross. They mock, they mock him. But it is nothing compared to the glory of the positions setting down at the right hand and the throne of God. He is alive and he is, uh, he is victorious. Now, if you are not a, a Christian, if you, are, you don't have a personal relationship yet to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, maybe today is the day of your salvation. Uh, believe in his name and believe in his finished work. 
He died for your sins, for you and for, for us. Jesus Christ is the only one worthy to wash our sins and save us from the sting of eternal death. Throughout the history, he proves his unchanging love to us and victory over death. Brethren, this year onward, let us run, let us keep running. Do not quit, do not give up until we reach the finish line. No one is too old to serve God. We must keep growing, maturing, and serving to the end of our days. Let us run the race that is set before us. We are running the race. The vic we are not running the race for victory. Rather, we are already victorious. The victory of Jesus Christ already claimed for us. To God be the glory. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you, O God, for your reminders. Thank you, O God, for your love. Thank you, O God, you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Who died for our sins, O God. Thank you, O God, that he is the author and the perfecter of our faith, and we can run the race with patience, endure, and focus only to your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, O God, for the victory that you have given to us. I pray that you continually bless us, continually uh, uh, empower all your sons, O God, all, your, all the brethren who are watching right now. I pray that you continually convict them, continually uh, encourage them to continually serve you, O God, and because this is what, you're, what you want us to do, O God. I pray that you continually bless even our uh, pastor, O God, continually to use him and strengthen him, encourage him, O God. I, I pray everything this day. Thank you, O God, for everything, O God, for you all the praises and glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What a great blessing it is to be affirmed from the Word of God that we have a Savior, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us all stand as we have our closing song. Let us sing the song, Come and Dine. Come and Dine. Truly, it is in Jesus Christ where we can find satisfaction. And as our preacher has said, if you have not professed your faith in Jesus Christ yet, now is the day of your conversion. So let us sing the song, Come and Dine. Has ready sing. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and dine. With his manna he doth feed and supplies our every need. Oh, tis sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. You may peace and Jesus. This table all the time. He who fed a multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry call it now, come and dine. The disciples came to land, thus obeying Christ's command. For the master called unto them, come and dine. There they found their hearts desire, bread and fish upon the he satisfies the hungry every time. Come and dine, the master call it, come and dine. You may peace at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed a multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry call it now, come and dine. Soon the lamb will take his pride. Oh, to be a glorious sight, all the saints in spot.
satisfied And with Jesus they will peace eternally Come and dine, the Master call it, come and dine You may feast at Jesus' table all the time He who fed a multitude turned the water into wine To the hungry call it now, come and dine Blessed evening to everyone and uh, thank you for all those who have joined us Again, good evening